if I could put this thing on and be on the 50 yard line at the Super Bowl, if I could sit center court at a Laker game, hockey fans sit center ice, or soccer, any any of that stuff. <laughs> I know it detaches you from people and that kind of stuff. But as a sports fan, I'd be so that would be, that would be the killer use case experience. When they demonstrated the ESPN app when they first showed Vision Pro, you could like replay it live what was happening and see the players pop up. That was unbelievable. If we get to that point, which I imagine we ultimately will, I I would put on Vision Pro before anything else. I'd be like, sorry, family. Yep. I'm going to see you in three hours. Like NFL playoffs are on. I'm in. John, it is a big week. How are you doing? Oh, boy, we got stuff to talk about. It's major. I am good. I am, I am good. We got probably the biggest show, I think, at least in the past few years. Oh, yeah. Uh, on tap today. Oh, yeah. But I just want to say, before we introduce our guest, which is probably the best guest we've ever had. Um, Always the best guest. Every time. I have been looking forward to this episode more, more than most, I, I must say, not just because of our guest, but because I actually wanted to talk to you. Not that I dislike talking to you, but I've been more excited to talk to you over the Fair, past few days you. than I have been for quite a long time. Obviously, it's been the launch of the Vision Pro. Yes. Let's take this off. Take uh, it we off. got it. We all have it in our hands, including our guest. Why don't you introduce this man? I mean, he needs no introduction. He could right. go by one name. He could be Madonna. He could be Cher. Zendaya. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'll call him Dan. You know him as Mr. Macrimers himself. Yes. Dan, yeah. how are you doing today? Not too bad. God, I need to go back and, and listen to all of the introductions because they just become more absurd each and every time I'm on. And, and, more, and more honest and realistic. If I it's true. Say. Could we just get into Vision Pro? We have to. That's like, I think that's we the can. only like, topic like, we have just, today. Let's just... Let's just, I like talk a little bit if we have time, some iOS 18. Okay, yes, let's do that as well. Let's do that as well. But like, let's, let's talk. Let's talk about this you're the, you're the, you've used it longer than we have, or at least you've had more experience with it than we've yes. had, right? You got it. You I've got had it early. I've, but to be, but to be clear, I've had one hour or maybe 90 minutes prior to launch. So okay. it's not real. Like if you've had it for a few days now. And Fair if enough. we've all used it the same amount after it came out, I only have 90 minutes more with it than you guys. Okay. My question for Dan, first of all, is who's blacklisted more from Apple? Mac rumors or me? Ooh. You. No, oh, fair enough. Okay. I got to say you. Da so Dan, I got to right. say you right. now, right? Because Dan recorded the Mac rumors podcast uh, in Apple Park. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Fair enough. Um, okay. But you know what? We should all be on the right list. I think so. I wasn't even on. Um, listen, I didn't get it. I didn't get a review unit either. So, <laughs> all right, Drew, Vision Pro. Let's hear your. Let's hear your thoughts. Hear my thoughts. Okay. Obviously, Apple releases a major new product category very rarely. I believe it was absolutely nine years ago. Was the Apple Watch? I'm not going to count the HomePod as one. So I'm going to say Apple Watch would probably be the last major one. So obviously that means we need to, for people who do what we do, we need to have this thing day one or earlier if possible yep. so we can make our content. So in order to do that, I had to order twice. I had to order twice for UPS delivery because I couldn't get a spot to pick up in store. Then I woke up the day it was released and I said, I'm just going to go to the store and just hope for the best because UPS said, hey, it's coming today by 7 p.m. And I'm thinking 7 p.m. West Coast time. <laughs> 10 p.m. East Coast time. Am I even going to be able to put a video out day one? And if I do, who's going to watch it at that point? So I woke up early, went to the Apple store. I got, so it opens at 8 a.m. I got there around 6.30. There were two people there. <laughs> there were five Apple employees outside, and I was the third customer. So there were more employees than customers waiting for Vision Pro. And this, this is, is a pretty big, big store. store. Probably, probably the, the biggest, biggest one. one. The, the second, second biggest, biggest one, one in our area. area. When the store opened, I was second in line as far as people who did not have an appointment. So I went in, um, they were able to get me taken care of. Um, and I did the demo only because I figured I'm here anyway, let me go through what a customer yeah. would go through so then I can at least talk about it from, from that side of things. And the first interesting thing I learned was they actually are not sealed in the back. So they, when they bring your box out in the store, they're in the back. They figure out what size you are. They put all that in the box and arrange everything. 
and they seal it on site and then bring it out to you, which I just thought was, did the demo. It was the same, you know, I didn't see anything new that I hadn't seen before. Um, but it was interesting to see, like, they follow a specific script. Um, and one part of the script is they will always refer to it as Apple Vision Pro. They will never refer to it as the Apple Vision Pro. They will never refer to it as the Vision Pro. It's Apple Vision Pro, like proper noun, like it's not. Right. Um, getting it home, I must say, like for me, I've been having a great time with it. The thing that I think has impressed me most is I have an 83 inch OLED TV from LG. Yeah. It's a G2. They just sent me a G3, 83 inch that's literally sitting in the box, like right outside my door. I got it about two weeks ago. I haven't had time to get it set up. Yeah. In Vision Pro, I just put a screen in front of my TV that goes from my floor to my ceiling and basically covers the entire wall. And it's like, when I'm not doing that and I just have my TV on, I feel like this TV is obsolete now. Like this is my backup if I have company over and want to watch something with other people TV. This is not the yeah. TV. This is not this is not my method um, of watching entertainment anymore. TV. I unless I'm playing an X, like Xbox or Switch or something, um, I'm in my Vision Pro when I'm watching content. The other thing that I thought would not be a big deal to me personally, I was like, I'm not going to use this thing like at my desk. I'm not going to use it like to to blow up my Mac display and like do work because that sound that sound honestly that sounded kind of lame to me. Um, both when Apple introduced it and when I went in and they they let me use Keynote right. I still haven't used Keynote. I have no desire to use Keynote. But yesterday I was editing a video about the Vision Pro that I, I put it out this morning, 25 hidden features that you might not know about. I was editing it in Vision Pro here. And then I closed a couple of apps on my Mac that I normally have, like messages, yeah. um, what are, like calendar. And I just put the messages Vision Pro app to my right. And I had my calendar above me. And I had Safari kind of like to my top right in between the two. And that was incredible. First of all, my Final Cut Pro timeline was just like, just blown up in front of me. It was so cool. Um, not just cool, but it was legitimately useful in a way that I never, I never thought I would, you know, to me, this was gonna be a, a, a fun device to use. Like I was gonna use it for entertainment. I was gonna use it for games. Um, kind of the way that I see the MetaQuest 3. It's for me, that's an entertainment device. I never, I would never consider using the MetaQuest 3 for work, um, nor would I have. I, I just tried it for the Vision Pro to be, to have like a well rounded opinion of it. And I found that seemed to be the killer use case for me that I would have never, never imagined. But I feel like I've been doing a lot of talking. I want to do some listening and see what you guys have been thinking. Dan? Yeah, I wanted to hear John's first, but you know what? I'll be brief uh, in the sense that I agree with a lot of the things that Andrew said. Um, so there were a couple of things. So I'm currently, you know, I, I did the the whole the experience as well. Um, I did not know that they sealed that in the back. That's really good yeah. insight because when they gave it to me, it felt like it was, oh, this was just one that they had stock with these bands in there. And it just, you know, it will work. Um, but yeah, I did definitely you have to recommend. Wait, like, did you going. wait like a few minutes before it came out? Um, yeah, but I just kind of assumed that was because they were like, well, they weren't busy, but there were some people there. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of assumed they were trying to find the right stuff. Okay. But now that you mentioned that they were probably sealing it and packing it up and that makes a lot of sense. But yeah, I, I highly recommend if you're going to go pick one up, uh, definitely do the demo if you've never used it before, especially, but just to get the size, I know a lot of people just want to get it and leave. Yep. And it's just like, no, do spend the hour that you have and take your time because it is valuable insight and even me who did get to use it as well at wwdc like i forgot it's been seven eight months so i you know i needed that refresher um on how to do it and everything and then um it was it was a good experience i took it home well back to the studio and then immediately did what we all were trying to do and that was rush a video out as soon as possible um and so you know i felt like that first day i really didn't get to enjoy it as much mm -hmm. Um, so I tried to do that over the weekend. Unfortunately, I had a pretty busy weekend, but I was able to find time in between and trying to research for like the next video and answer a lot of people's questions. Um, and so I found out some interesting things. Uh, one 
recently that you can, in fact, mirror your screen for your Mac and move to different rooms. Now, I'm in this studio space is one giant space. Yeah. Uh, and the only other room is a bathroom. But I did go into the bathroom and it did work. Uh, I brought my keyboard and mouse and it worked fine. So what you're I, saying is. And you is can connect to desktops. You mirrored your Mac's display into the Vision Pro screen and then you got up and took that screen with you into another took room. that screen with me and you didn't and it lose, looked amazing did you lose, uh, into so another you didn't room. lose any uh nope. speed or functionality or anything nope interesting nope wow. I, i'm gonna test it when i get home uh tonight again and go from the basement to the like main floor okay and see if I the I iMac that, that i have down there will carry over yeah, because like someone asked that, and I'm like, that's a really good question. No, here's and also over the weekend, we you know I had questions that I was trying to figure out, like, yeah. can you connect a desktop? Because when you look at a MacBook, it immediately pops up and says connect. And so then there are some misinformation things just being spread around, like, oh no, it only works with laptops. Right, right, right. But if you look at Apple's uh, stuff, they say any computer. And so you just have to go into the control center and do it that way. So, um, but yeah, ultimately it is right now my favorite thing to consume content. I also really like watching people use it who have no idea how to use it or what it is. And I've been letting anyone and everyone try to test it who's been over our house, including my, you know, family. My kids, it's a little too too big for them. How how so, did that go? Um, like so like your wife, for example. Yeah, she I mean, she doesn't hate technology, but like her favorite piece of tech is her phone. Like she doesn't have or use much of anything else. Or she doesn't not that she doesn't have, she just doesn't care to use anything besides her phone. And so Watching her genuinely be like, wow, this is like impressive and like, okay, it's weird, but like she was impressed and she liked it. And she surprisingly, one of the most impressive things was I explained to her like one time that you got a pinch and then she figured everything else out and like never. And I did it with a couple of other people and they still needed reminders like, no, no, it's not like this. It's like mm. just one, fi you know, <laughs> and she picked up on it pretty quickly. So I'm, I'm pretty, so I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, and she seemed to enjoy it. So. Good initial impressions. John, your initial impressions. I, Take I, us through. I, we took I, you through I, when I, we picked I, it up. I thought, yes. So you picked it up. So How did I this should, go? I did not do the in-store thing. I had UPS deliver it. No. Um, oh, okay. Mm. So, so I went your through first and, and usage of this was just by yourself in your sitting house. It, sitting in my house. We didn't rush out a video on it. So we don't, I don't have any videos up really, uh, except for a quick social one yep. on, on Vision Pro. There's a lot that was very exciting to me and a lot that is left to be desired, I think. Um, and I'm saying that as somebody who, who consumes a lot of apps and consumes a lot of content. First of all, I used to think the most ridiculous thing you could see somebody do is take a selfie. Now I'm convinced the most ridiculous thing you could see somebody do is wear VR goggles and pinch and zoom into the air. Um, the eye tracking is incredible. Um, it obviously it'll improve and be more accurate, but how accurate it is right now out of the box for a Gen 1 software version 1 is incredibly impressive. I expected that to be the weak part mm. of the whole experience, and it was definitely. Um, what Apple's done, I've seen a lot of people saying, oh, it's just, it just doesn't do anything that the MetaQuest doesn't do. And I think it depends on what you do. Yeah. And so if you're just consuming content, then there's really very little difference versus what the MetaQuest can do to pie, aside from how you interact with it. Um, and boot up time and getting into the stuff you want to do. I think where Apple separated themselves is clearly in the, the vision tracking feels so, so incredibly intuitive. And I was really excited to try it, to set up email, add photos in it, uh, mirror my Mac, and then kind of quickly realized that like there's not that much else there, right? Like I could watch a movie on that Avengers campus. Mm -hmm. um, I could see an incredible looking 3D butterfly land on my fingertip and then some dinosaurs attack. But there's not much to do when you're inside of it, um, really aside from consuming. And you can use it as a larger display, absolutely. Um, but the pass-through is not as good as the reality. Um, it's certainly good enough. I think where we're going to see big changes is when developers get behind it. And I don't think it has a developer support. It just doesn't. Um, yesterday, I had every opportunity. It's raining here in Southern California to sit and use this and play with it. And I just didn't find a reason to really. I didn't want to put it on my head. 
I was just sitting with my kids watching a watching a movie and hanging out. And I think that for me was very telling that I wasn't rushing to find a reason to use it. And I think for a lot of people, once the first three, four weeks wear off, and like, yes, I can mirror a huge giant desktop in front of me, but I could also use my computer and my face as well. Or I can also do that, but I don't want to have a separate window on one side for my Mac and then a separate window for Vision Pro apps. If I was Apple's roadmap, I would say the first thing I would do is let me rearrange apps on that home screen, please, because it's incredibly annoying to have That's to go to like other apps. Uh, second, yeah. let me pull Windows off of my desktop. Let me pull the email off into that window and put anywhere I want into that. That would be incredible. Um, I do think that Vision Pro, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little long-winded. Um, Vision Pro will ultimately be something incredible. And I think like everybody expected, this is very clearly a Gen 1 device. And it feels like a Gen 1 device from the weight on your forehead to the experience. And we've been, we're so far removed from an Apple Gen 1 device, like a real Gen 1 device. Like, I think we've forgotten what that's like. The first Apple Watch was not great. Like, you tried to do anything but check check notifications. notifications. It was was terrible. terrible. But it was on your wrist. You didn't pay much attention to it. This is literally strapped to your face. Um, And I think you become, at least for me, I become more aware of the shortcomings when I use it. But I'm still in awe of the technology that Apple. Makes sense. Makes sense. So why don't we, you gave a a good overview. Yeah, sure. Right? Thanks. Start to finish. <clears throat> Why don't we talk about? Because I think there are improvements to be made, as you said. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I think there are also, you know, things that we have found that we enjoy. So why don't we talk about what we liked? Yeah. Um, then go into the improvements. Um, one thing I did want to mention that you touched on a second ago. I've seen this a lot on social media. It doesn't do anything. The Meta Quest three can't do right see that all see that all, see the, that time. all the place now yeah my take on that like if you compare that to any other product right this ferrari doesn't do anything that this honda can't do right it, sure. true but also kind of not right so for example i'm just gonna i'm going off of Sometimes it's difficult for me to to go into like non-tech person brain and into just average person yeah. brain, right? Now I'm talking average Apple iPhone user. If you're an iPhone user, sure. you put this on for the first time without having to download any additional apps. Here is my entire photo library history in front of me. Here is that panoramic photo I took three years ago on our family vacation, right? Or whatever it might be. If you buy this thing in a couple of years, here's every spatial video I've recorded. Here's when my child was, you know, this or that. It's like these things, yes, the MetaQuest 3 can show you pictures and you can blow them up, right? But it's, it's, this is different. Like in December, this past December, I went to see my grandmother. She's 93. I took a bunch of, um, I decided I'm, I'm going to set up my phone on a little tripod and just ask her questions about her life. Like, I'm just going to ask awesome. her like, kind of like, a, like not really an interview, like a casual interview. Um, and just have her aunt, like when she was growing up and different things. I just, and I was watching these in there and it really is almost an emotional experience for people that, you know, whether it's people that are here or people that may be gone. Or, you know, I can't imagine what it would have been like if I put on Vision Pro and I had spatial video of, you know, when my son was a baby. Like, that would have been mm-hmm. amazing. And there are people that are going to have that opportunity. And again, yes, you can watch personal family videos on a MetaQuest 3, but this is just a whole nother level of different. And I think a lot of people get caught up in specs. Like, what, what can it do? What can this thing do? And they miss the, how does this thing make you feel? And I think that's what Apple sells, right? Like, and that's I think fair. that like that, that's marketing 101. Talk about how it makes the person feel and not what the thing does. And I feel like Vision Pro, despite a lot of the shortcomings and despite a lot of the very obvious, this is a first gen product, you can see 
you can feel what it makes you feel today and you can kind of see where they're going with the product based on that if that makes sense what do you guys think yeah 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 i mean i i think the the thing with like spatial videos that i i also noticed this weekend is um unfortunate because uh you know the whole time i before we got it i'm sitting there thinking like why would anyone want to wear the headset to take spatial videos mm. or spatial photos when you can just use your phone but i've come to realize that the spatial part of the spatial photos and videos is a lot better when you take it on the headset so now i'm kind of is torn it? in the sense of like okay if this is it is it is much better like much better the quality is not as good but the actual like realistic spatial portion because of the cameras and the way they're set up it is yeah. much better i just did like a, a my first video actually i thought about it last night um and i just did it on the couch and had my dog come to me and it's much more realistic um and like feels like i could just put my hand out and like pet my dog like it's, it's can really, you really can you good. can you explain i just want to understand so you said it's better but not as good quality that kind of like the like the no 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 like like the spatial part like the 3d aspect of it is, is better. much better using the space yes okay than your phone but like obviously your phone has um has a better camera got sensor it, on got it, it. So got it okay. the lenses the the, the, the sh yeah the sharpness the crispness of the video and the and the photos are going to be better in that sense but it doesn't have the same spatial awareness that it does on your headset okay i've so actually recorded they do nothing look different and you should try it and you'll notice immediately Try something with some like with some depth, like a person or an animal or something. Okay, that's interesting because um, from the iPhone, like I said, I've recorded yeah. like when they released that feature, I started just recording anything non work related. That's just like family videos. I would just record everything in spatial, um, which I think I'm just gonna do mm -hmm. from now. Like I'd rather have it in spatial than not. And I I was blown away when watching it, so I didn't even realize that. I just thought, I guess, spatial video is spatial yeah, my, video. And it, it didn't occur to me that the headset might be the better choice for recording these things. Yeah. It might not be as cool to sit there with your grandma and wear that headset the whole time. <laughs> like, right, you might right. not want to do that. But, like, I, I think maybe it also is, like, when you, put, when you start watching spatial videos from your phone, you notice when you, like, up the immersiveness it's not still like all the way around it's still got a little bit of vignetting going around oh, yeah, yeah. it's that, like that, that haze. It's, it's like super widescreen yeah so what you're looking at through the headset when you take your spatial videos with the headset on is exactly what you're going to get when you look back oh interesting so okay. it's like the entire field of view as opposed to what your phone can pick up okay now where i could be go? wrong unless i'm where missing you some go to get into there, the settings but... to even take pictures it's just it's the left Button, right? Turns it on. Yeah, you just push that button and then you uh, switch between photo and video with your little gestures. Um, and so, yeah, that was a brief thing that I discovered yesterday. Um, do you want me to tell you the things that I liked as well? Yes, please. Please. Okay. I love cinema mode. I need that mode to be across all apps. Like, if you're developing an app for Vision Pro, that should be part of the basic player. And I haven't, ex like, I have not jumped into every app that's specifically made i think i've tried a couple like hbo max mm -hmm. um disney plus i don't remember seeing that there so i think the that mode is only for things in apple tv which is a little can you, bit of a can bummer you explain, i'm not explain gonna what that is. Yeah, yeah what do you mean by cinema it? mode oh yeah yeah sorry so let me yes cinema mode is basically putting you into a giant movie theater and uh it's awesome so it's fully immersive and it's in a movie theater and then you can change your seat location you want to be front row, it adjusts accordingly. You want to be middle row, it'll do that. You want to be in the back, yes. Then you can adjust if you want to be in a balcony. So that's kind of my preferred one because you're a little bit more like eye level. But it's awesome. It makes the videos and everything. It literally does make you feel like you're in an empty movie theater. I, I, I'm yeah. I, I'm fully on board with that. I want all the content to be like that. I don't know if you guys have tried it yet or not. but yeah. I, I found that, so you're talking about the specific environment or watching a video, right? Yeah. Changes so, by, by, by so, default, it widescreens it out. Right. And it makes it look like yeah. you're like in some sort of a theater. What I find interesting there is one other thing that surprised me was uh, laying down and just putting a screen on the ceiling. That's the mm -hmm. coolest thing. 
And if you're in the Vision Pro, you can go into like one of Apple's environments and, you know, get rid of your room or whatever and make the screen however big you wanted to have it just in the night sky with stars above it and everything like that. With Disney's, if you're laying down, you can be in the environment. But as soon as you hit play on the movie, Disney has a a locked perspective of where that movie screen is going to be. So in other words, if you're laying down, you're staring at the ceiling of whatever environment you're in, as opposed to you can't move the video player into your view. With Apple, you can. Um, and then HBO has, uh, they have one environment. You're in the, what's it called? The throne room or whatever from game of thrones oh i haven't tried that oh yeah so yeah hbo max has one environment it's game of thrones themed and you're in the i forget you know the the, the main throne chair that's in all of their game of yeah. thrones uh advertising you're in that room the room looks cool okay um not as cool as the disney ones i think i think disney's are the most interesting and fun and also feel like realistic um but I do wish you could place the player anywhere you want. I think you can only do that in the TV app, unfortunately. But I agree with you, Dan. Like, is that be? Go ahead. I was gonna say, is that because of the the the, the content though? Is it some of the content in Disney like 3D? So you maybe you can't. It is, change but that because they want you to be watching it from that perspective. No, it is. It is 3D. But if I go into TV Plus and choose a 3D movie there, I can still put that on the ceiling okay. and watch a 3D movie that way. Um, and with Disney Plus, if I'm not in an environment, I can put the, the display anywhere I want. It's only when I'm inside of one of their environments that I can't move the display anymore. So really quick, because I do want to hear John's favorite thing. Um, I just on the content perspective, the, the immersive videos that they have, like the tightrope walking one. I haven't even terrifying. tried those yet. But it's awesome. It's terrifying because it's pretty what are, realistic. What are those under? It's just you. So I think you just go to uh, it's the TV app and then it's under home and you got to kind of scroll up a little bit like you're going to see your stuff first and then it'll be yeah. like Apple or go into the Apple TV and Plus so like section the, and go to latest releases. Yeah. Or or that I, I found it quickly on the home, but that'll probably be replaced in the next come, you know, coming weeks as Vision Pro is out. But the the immersive stuff that the Alicia Keys stuff's really cool. I cannot wait to see more of that, and I cannot wait to see sports in that immersive mode or when you're in like John's waiting center field. Or I know I'd watch soccer. I don't even like soccer that much. <laughs> I'd watch soccer if I can sit on top the on top the goal. Like that's awesome. So sports uh, for Vision would amazing, Pro John. would be similar. Remember when HD TVs first came out and everything was a nature documentary, like everything was just <laughs> beavers building dams and bears crossing rivers. Like that was the killer feature for watching. HD TV back like 20 years ago. It sounds like sports is what people want to do with Vision Pro as far as show me the value of this with sport. Yeah. So at least to me, there's still no compelling use case aside from the cool factor, right? It's cool to watch a video on your giant screen. It's cool to watch a video on your ceiling, but it's not a killer use case. And I think ultimately for a lot of people, eventually it's going to be easier to just watch on your iPad because your Vision Pro's downstairs. It's not charged. It hurts your face. There has to be a killer use case for it. I think, at least for me, and I can only speak from my experience, sports would be it, right? If I could put this thing on and be on the 50-yard line at the Super Bowl, if I could sit center court at a Laker game, hockey fans sit center ice, or soccer, any, any of that stuff. <laughs> I know it detaches you from people and that kind of stuff, but as a sports fan, you can't maybe make it to those events. It's too expensive. I'd be sold. That would, that would be the killer use case experience. When they demonstrated the ESPN app when they first showed Vision Pro, and you could like replay it live what was happening and see the players pop up. That was unbelievable. If we get to that point, which I imagine we ultimately will, I, I would put on Vision Pro before anything else. I'd be like, sorry, family. Yep. I'm going to see in three hours, like NFL playoffs are on. Like I'm, like I'm, I'm in. Um, Let me ask you a question about that regarding yeah, sports. Yeah. <clears throat> Please. So you've obviously, you've tried it. You've seen the... Yes quality of displays right mm -hmm. it's great the quality of displays incredible when you when you think of sports would you do you see it as something you would be willing to like pay for a ticket to access as opposed to like here's my subscription to youtube tv i just want to watch sports on this would you actually pay on a per event basis i don't know what it would be but let's just say 
eight bucks to watch this Sunday's game? Would would you actually pay if it I, had I would the features you would want? Yeah, I would imagine it's probably going to be the model. And if you look at like, uh, maybe we're getting too out of pocket, but NFL playoffs, there are a couple games that were on NBC streaming at Peacock. And you had to subscribe to Peacock. To yeah. I think that's the way that sports are going, but I also think there's going to be a pay-per-view model where you can pay to watch or pay to subscribe. And you get to get everything. Uh, and honestly, if it offered something different, if it offered me that 50-yard line feel, like I, I would 100% pay for that. I would happily, yep. I would happily pay for that. Dan, I'm like you said, I'm sure. What would you guys pay? You know, I'm just curious. Would as well. If what, like what, where's the elasticity to you personally? If, I think if it works as well as you would imagine, like simulate actually being yep. there, probably pay for a big game, fifty to hundred bucks. Like really? I, like like I'd pay pay like I'd pay pay per view for. Oh jeez. Like I'd pay pay per view for a big fight. Okay. I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any difference. Dan, what would you pay? Yeah. Single game. Yeah, single game. I mean, big game. You can't wait to see this game. S- <sighs> Sit where you want in the stadium, all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I would, I, I don't know that I would love to pay fifty or a hundred dollars, but I would do it if it was offered and it, if it was as good as John. I mean, yeah, could, yeah. Could you imagine sitting fifty yard line, seeing Deshaun Watson throw his third interception? It's gonna look like you are actually <laughs> there. It's gonna be perfect. <laughs> but I'm, I mean, I know the fifty uh, yard line well, hey, is like the where, you, like, if you were buying a ticket to a real game, is probably where you want to be, right? But. If you were able to say, okay, they're on the they're on the five yard line for this big play, and you could just move over there, right? That would Absolutely. probably be or be or be on the or be on the field, yes. like holy, oh yeah, oh, yeah. or above, like, could right? You ma- could well, you, like could you think imagine? about that's well, true. think about the camera that's on the on yeah. the little like zip line yeah. that they have. If that camera was rated for Vision Pro and could shoot that, I mean, I mean, if I that could, would be amazing. If I could just do this and move myself wherever <laughs> I want to yeah. be and want to sit, like I'm, I'm in, yeah. like. I know that's that maybe that's 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 too niche for a lot of people, but as a sports fan, like that's what Vision Pro is missing. I, I think is a killer use case. I love baseball, but not enough to watch it on a right. Well, there's just too many games, blah blah yeah. blah. But like, if you were putting me like the one shot that they showed was uh, a, at Fenway, and you're on like the first baseline, like if you can, and you're like on the field, if you can do that, I would watch baseball all the time. That sounds amazing. If I could sit behind the ump, get the ump's view, like, you know, man, the amount of people complaining about balls and strikes would be astronomical, but <laughs> it would be cool. Like, that's the kind of stuff that I want to do. Would I do it all the time? I don't know. For the Browns, like, you know, I'm so stuck in my, like, I go to half the games and then when I'm at home, like, is it gonna is it going to be better than watching it on broadcast? Like, I would hope so. And so, yeah, I'd probably pay a little more, but I'm already given the NFL so much more money as it is. It's hard. <laughs> Um, okay. So I just want to chime in. There, there's a lot of stuff that I like about Vision Pro, like I said. I think the UI, the eye tracking, that feels like the future. Not to have a controller in my hand to activate the weight yeah. of this thing, really heavy. And at least to me, it starts to hurt my face after a while. The placement of the power cord behind the ear, and that kind of goes over the ear, weird placement. Annoying. Why it's not in the why it's not in the back? Um, I don't. I'm sure Apple has a reason. I don't know what it is, but constantly fixing my ear to move the cord, carrying an external battery pack, you know, again, Quest, you don't, you don't need it, uh, is cumbersome. Um, battery life seems fine on it, fairness. Um, but it's a, it's a cumbersome experience, and I think that's what this boils down to for me, is using Vision Pro as a cumbersome experience. Putting on a giant headset, making sure I've got a spot for the battery, um, Feeling self-conscious that I look like a, I don't know what I look like. Um, you know, look like I want to go skiing. It's cumbersome, right? And I know the argument, you got to get to Gen 3 and Gen 4 and that kind of stuff. Um, I don't think this is a product most people should buy. I really don't. Um, I think this is a product everybody should try. Get that, get that rich friend who's got one to try it. I think within 15 minutes, you'll know what it's about and be excited for what's to come from it. I don't think this is a product that almost anybody should buy right now as it is. Yeah, I can't, I don't think I can argue with that. I mean, I think that's a perfect way to say it. I think it's something everyone should yeah. try, but I mean, it's, it's prohibitive. It's prohibitively expensive. Um, yeah. Even, you know, even if the other issues you mentioned didn't exist, it's still prohibitively expensive. The price is going to need to come down yeah. just to become a mass market um, device. Mm-hmm. 
but I think cumbersome is almost the perfect word. Like that's what it is. That that's a great way to describe the product, what it can do. That is what kind of makes, or I guess the hope is that's what makes it being cumbersome worth it. That's what makes you look past that. Right. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that it's not a cumbersome thing to use. Um, I don't know, John, if you've switched up the bands or not, I was yeah. using uh, the solo band the entire time very comfortably. And I kept seeing everyone say, no, you got to use the dual loop band. That one's way more comfortable. So I try, I switched it. And that, that was the first time I felt the weight. That was the first time my face hurt was switching to the dual loop band. Um, prior to that, I had never, I didn't understand why everyone was saying it was so heavy. I, so, I actually had the same experience. Interesting. The, interesting. Loop, the solo loop was more comfortable for okay. me. I'm going to try it again. Yeah. So uh, for me, just to let people know if I think the consensus has been just don't even try the solo loop, go directly to dual. Uh, for me, the dual loop was where I felt the pain, um, and the solo loop is not. So that's just one one little aside. I, I I will say also there was some things that were very pleasantly surprising with the headset. Now, having said everything that I just said, if you decide to get it, there are some things that I would really just learn. I was, you know, two hours before we recorded, I realized this. First, being downloading iPhone apps. Uh, it was very, again, a cumbersome experience trying to set up apps. And I had to go to my phone and open one password, see what passwords were or maybe this is me being foolish, realized I could install 1Password, the iPhone app, directly on Vision Pro, and instead of Face ID, it allowed me by default to use Optic ID. I oh. didn't have to constantly finger touch in the password to get that to work. I thought that was really cool. I don't know if that's on the developer side or Apple side. I thought that was really seamless. So now logging into here and using Vision Pro became slightly less cumbersome. Mm -hmm. Um. That was a very pleasant surprise. The more I use it, the more surprises that I'm finding. But my general consensus of cumbersome experience hasn't changed. It just takes time to get used to it and get everything um, kind of where you want it to be. But if I could play devil's advocate Please. real quick. Do it. Is there, what, what's wrong with, what's wrong with letting it just be what it is? And that's not something that you, it doesn't need to be on your face all the time. It doesn't need to replace anything at all. Why can't it just be another device that you can do the same things that you can do on your phone, on your iPad, and on your Mac? What was the biggest thing about the iPad when it first came out? Why do I need that? It's just a bigger version of my phone. The iPhone, well, that's just a it's just an iPod that can make phone calls. Why do I need I'll just, you know, that that's that's actually more useful because you can combine two things. But with the iPad, you're not getting rid of your phone. But it and it's this it's just a bigger version of it. So in my mind, I'm looking at this as this is a cooler version of my iPad and sometimes my Mac, in the sense that there are specific use cases for it right now where I'm going to use it, and then ultimately it's going to sit there. And I think the answer to my question is the reason why people are complaining about it and saying that it's not necessarily it's it's just the price. If the price was five hundred dollars, sure. There's no there's no way that anyone would ever say like, oh, this is not worth it. I, they would go buy it and they would only use it as much as they use their iPads probably. Uh, and and that would be the end of it. Because we probably all have iPads here and most of the people that are... And how often are you using your iPad over your Mac or your phone realistically on a daily basis? It's probably not as much. But can you get rid of your iPad? I would say most people will probably be like, no, I, I do want it for very specific use cases. It's just the price. That's the only thing that's really like hindering everybody's perspective on the fact that this doesn't need to be life-changing tech right now. It will be if Apple gets it to where they want it to be in the later future generations and ultimately being AR. But as of right now, I'm just enjoying it as another tool, another device that I can use and supplement with you know other things that I already have. And I'm not expecting it to replace anything at all on a daily basis. It's going to replace some things if I can get over the self-conscious factor of wearing it on an airplane, yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to take over the iPad for me, and I don't need to bring it. So, I don't think any of us said it was going to replace anything they had. Personally. No, 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 and let me rephrase that. It's not okay. directed towards you guys, but there are so there many are. people online saying, like, just like, oh, and, like, a lot of people putting it down and, like, what is wrong with people in the world? Like, this is dystopian and take it. Like, no, it's not. It's not dystopian. I'm not ignoring my family on a regular basis and ignoring friends. And like, I still would rather go to a concert as opposed to, 
you know, watch it, maybe not all the time, where you're like, I don't really like that band that much. Let's watch it in Vision Pro. That's, by the way, another use case would be awesome for that. Uh, but, you know, thinking down the line, uh, that would be cool. But, like, you know, it's not going to replace my social life. It's not going to replace my personal home life. It's just another thing to do yeah. when you want to use it. Um, I I agree with that completely. I do think the other thing holding it back, aside from the price, is the weight of the device. Not even the size. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the size, I mean, it's it's big, but I think it's no size-wise from any of the other VR headsets that are out there. Um, it's a really heavy thing yeah. to wear. Okay, so no matter what loop strap um, you've got on it, it's really heavy on your face. And for a lot of people, you feel it. I had ear surgery as a kid, so things behind my ears are real sensitive. I can't wear headphones for prolonged periods of time generally, and the cord wraps behind my ear because of the placement, and it starts to hurt. That makes sense. I do think the answer to what Dan was saying is price. It's like why – the I think the more you pay for something, the more you yeah. expect it to do, right? The, the more expensive something is, is like the curve is it, it needs to impress me more. Like the cost is the directly in line with you better be worth it. That's how you determine if something's worth it or not, right? Based on I paid yeah. this much, how much value did I get out of the money or time that I spent with it? Um, but I, I do I do think. What about the iPad Pro? What about if it was the same price as the iPad Pro? Do you think that's worth 15? It's even going to get more expensive now with OLED displays. We'll see. You we'll think see. it's worth that same not. price? I hope not. <laughs> I don't, OLED is I not think a, it's going OLED to be. is not worth twice the price for an iPad for me personally. I actually right. do I do think that's the target is getting to price parity with the iPad. I really do. But I will I, tell I you what... I will I will use the Vision Pro more than I use my iPad. I will. Um because again the use case that I didn't think I would ever do, which is sitting at my desk working, turns out to be not just impressive from a, oh, this is so cool, but actually letting me be more productive. I didn't expect that, and it does. Now, I don't think that's going to sell. Is, it's not going to sell these, though. But is that honeymoon phase still? I mean, if we, we look at this in three months from now, you think you're still... Well, the reason I would say no... Here's why I would say no. And this is going to sound hard to believe because of the weight of this product. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I, I swear this is true. When I was editing, um, this was two days ago on Saturday. When I was editing, I was first just like, let me just try this Mac connection thing because I hadn't tried it yet. I, and I was like, oh, wow, this yeah. is so cool and amazing, right? Then I'm like, let me try editing a video. Obviously, for I mean, I don't know for other people. For me, editing a video... Is at least a couple hour process. Yeah. I want to say 30 minutes in or whatever. I'm just editing like normal, whatever. And it wasn't until I was done editing, exported, and was doing other stuff on my computer that I was like, wait a minute, I'm still wearing Vision Pro. Like, I wasn't like in test mode, like, oh, let me try this, let me try that. It was just like, I was just yeah. in work. I was in the flow of work, just doing my thing. And realize that I was still in it, if that makes sense. So it was like, the reason I say it's not the honeymoon phase thing is because I wasn't like concentrating on, oh, let me let me try stuff Andrew. and play around with it. Andrew, I was just in Andrew. the flow of work. You know I love you. You know I respect you. But in no world does anybody forget they have Vision Pro on their face. There is not I'm a single you. I'm telling you. a single human being that would ever forget that they have Vision Pro on their face. I like. Not, what I'm not saying is not like I, I like, oh, wait, I still have this on my face. How the hell did this get here? Yeah. I'm, what I'm saying is that my focus wasn't on Vision Pro. Like if I'm in my living room okay. and I'm like, okay. and I'm All like right, watching fair. stuff or that's playing fair. with apps, like I'm obviously like, ooh, what can I do with this? What can I do with that? I wasn't focused on what can this product do. I was completely focused on the work I was doing. And when I finished the task of editing, I just went into like emails and all. So I wasn't like, Maybe you with... forgot that you were using Vision Pro. Is that what you're saying? Like it felt like you were using your Mac. Exactly. Like I'm just. I just felt okay. like I yeah. wasn't. I wasn't evaluating the product anymore. I was just like using it. If that makes sense. Like if you get a new that's, phone, you're that's, playing that's... with it and trying stuff out. But six months later, you're just using your phone. You're not really evaluating it anymore. So that's more what I mean. Like I was just. I was just working. I wasn't. I wasn't playing. I wasn't yeah. testing. I was just working. And. Do you, do you... Oh, go ahead. Do you think that you, you think that'll continue? 
It just I think the work part will continue for me um, because I did find it to be to increase my productivity. Um, but I here's what I think about the price. I feel like the one thing you can't do that would sell these going back to spatial video, if you could show people, whether it's here's your parents, here's your loved one that's no longer here, or here's your children when they were younger, if you could put that on someone's head and give that experience to them, so yes. many people would drop $3,500, like just on that alone. But the problem is you can't show them that, right? Even if they come in for a demo in the store, when they come yeah. into the store, those devices are like loaded with a specific demo. I don't even know if you can like airdrop. Oh yeah, airdrop that picture of your, you know what I mean? You can't. So yeah, you, I think the one could. thing, okay, maybe you can, but you would have to have it on your phone, right? The one thing, I right. think that is the killer feature. The killer feature here is you can relive memories. You can relive memories in a way that you never could before, but the problem with that killer feature is you have to have that memory on your phone accessible already. See what I'm yeah. saying? Because looking at someone else's demo footage of like a, a random child blowing out a birthday candle is cool. It looks cool, but it doesn't spark the same thing that looking at your own personal memories would do. I don't know how they solve that No, but it could problem. be enough. It could be enough. It could be enough for someone to be like, all right, well, if this is this good, mm -hmm. then I just replace those kids with my kids. <laughs> in theory with the whatever video i whatever video i take and it should be as good just know that it's not if you use your iphone it is much better Fair using enough. the cameras on Fair the vision enough. pro <laughs> um is what do you guys think the return rate is going to be on these things consistent with other apple products that is such or a good question higher or lower? that is such a good question oh man i have no idea i'm going to say it's high right i would assume high too you get a 14 day return policy yeah. with apple so that means we will know is there and no restocking fee on these no re apple doesn't do restocking fees on anything so no right, restocking fee. This, that, they this might be this. unique. No, they don't. They yeah. don't. They don't do <laughs> they any, should for this. They don't do any restocking fee. They're not going to do it just for one product. That would be crazy. Okay. They should. I have a feeling it's going to be really high. Here's, I, I here's so, remember I told you I had to order two. Oh, so the reason by going back to that, the reason I ordered two for delivery was because every time I scanned my face, I would get a different size. <laughs> so I was okay. I'm just going to order the two that keep, keep coming up the most. Yeah. And then I went and bought a third one at the Apple store to have one that morning. So I have two to return right out of the gate. Not because I didn't like it, okay. but because I, I, I found it unreliable that the scanner, the, the, the head scanning. Yeah. So that's two right there. I wonder how many people were just like, I, I want to get something and you know, but a lot of people are going to want to try it and then say, this wasn't, this yeah. wasn't worth $3,500 for me, which again is completely fair, right? <laughs> like, yeah. Um, it will. I mean, we're never going to know, right? We're never going to know what is the return rate. Apple's no. not going to be like, hey, turn rate of Apple Vision Pro was equal to or more yeah. or less. We're never going to know. Um, what I think is going to be interesting. This is how at least I kind of determine in a. Uh, I forget the term where it's like just within my my realm of view or whatever, how popular something is is when I go on an airplane, how many people do I see using this thing? When I go on a plane, how many people yeah. do I see using, you know, some products are easier than others. If I see that titanium colored iPhone, how many people are using the, the iPhone 15 Pro? How many people are using an iPad? How many people have an Android device yeah. in their hands? How many people are gonna have, be wearing Vision Pro out and about, whether it's, you know, at a cafe or on an airplane or whatever it might be, I feel like that's kind of the barometer for success, especially I think in an airplane, because I think this is a product that lends itself to being more popular for people who do travel often. Kind of like, you know, a decade ago or whatever, Bose, if you saw Bose over ears, like that's really a product that mm -hmm. lent to business travelers. That's where I feel like you would see the most, because you know, I don't. I mean, for me, I don't take public transportation. I don't take the train. I'm not in New York City, so that's kind of where I would look around to see. I just want to know how popular is this thing really in the real world. Can I ask you a question, Andrew? Yeah, please. You have AirPod Maxes, right? Yeah. And Dan, you too. 
What's the biggest pain yeah. about traveling with AirPod Maxes? The case. The cumbersomeness of, of carrying them around. Because yeah. of because of what? How big they are, right? Yeah. You take a path your mm-hmm. take a path your backpack. Correct. Have you seen the carrying case for Vision Pro? Yeah. Dude, it's I massive. Need, it's not good. It's not, step, it looks like a backpack. It like this. It looks like a backpack on its own. Like I don't know. You got to stick that in the little carry-on size uh, uh, measurement stand yeah. at the airport to uh, yeah, see if it fits. I, I'm not sure that alone will fit in the seat back in front of you. Um, so I don't <laughs> no, know how. Not. I don't know if we're going to see these things on airplanes because you got to carry it like this, or you know, you're paying a separate baggage fee to put on your face computer. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I just a. Uh, Do you guys have that carrying but... case? I got it. it looks I like do. a pillow. Here. Okay, I actually have it, but I didn't open it yet. So I haven't even seen it like in person. But from what I've seen online, it looks like it's literally a little backpack, right? Like it's the size of like maybe a mini backpack yeah, or at least like a squ- large it's purse. Squishy. It's weird. I don't know why it's like a pillow on the outside. It's protecting. It's like ripstop protect material. It, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I feel like it could be half the size. The band folds in. Just fold it in and make it half the size. Why do we need... Oh, here's the carrying power. Like I don't. No, there that. are other. I, there I'll are other the... carrying cases, third parties, right? Right. They're right. Much smaller. You can buy, yeah, you can. I, I think that's yeah. probably gonna be the go. I'll probably return the carrying case, but nothing screams rob me like walking to the airport carrying that thing, right? Like in your honestly, uh, in your hand. Like I'm holding up the Vision Pro for those of you who are not watching, um, and like comes with that that protective. Uh, yeah thing over it mm-hmm. just do that and then fold this in like this and shove it in the top part what of your backpack you'll be fine like yep. totally yeah fine. it'll be fine you don't need a you don't need a travel case if you it are looks, careful and it looks um, to be pretty durable did you guys see sam yeah, cole's oh, video? Yeah. sam cole's video by yes. the way yeah yes it was our yeah. guest last guest last week for anybody who didn't see it i thought it was gonna be like a joke sam literally took vision pro glass face down holding it by the band and just dropped it <laughs> just to see what would happen. Yep. And uh, I'm going to quote uh, my friend Zach in Glass Meets Concrete. Concrete always wins. Yes. I'm just saying, just shattered into like a bajillion pieces. Now, it took um, a while, though. But then to it worked fair. totally fine. But it worked, to- it worked totally fine. He re- stripped that whole. It looked like a that tempered was glass interesting. Yeah. yeah. And he just took that whole piece off, and it's like, you don't even really need that. Honestly, you don't. <laughs> That kind of yeah, revealed how much I don't know how much that piece weighed, but it, it did reveal that a, at least a portion of the weight of the Vision Pro is for the outer display that isn't even meant for the user, right? Yeah. Like yeah. that that outer get, display does mean no good. That's for other people. Get rid of that whole I mean, you can see the roadmap for like the Apple Vision, right? Not pro. Like you can see what it is. Right? Like, I don't know no if they're gonna get rid of there's that. No persona. I don't know they're gonna get rid there's of no that. persona. I think you clearly see it. I mean, it's two of the worst features right now. Persona and eyesight are bad out of the box. Persona is a little Dan, bit better don't, than you're, eyesight. You're mad about your persona. My persona is cool. Hell Dan's yeah, persona I'm mad about my persona. Great. I look I mean, awful. But, 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 but let me ask you, what's to stop you from creating a persona using your iPhone or using the LiDAR on your iPhone? And yeah, just nothing. Ha- have that already just be on yeah. the Vision Pro. Like You don't need to hold this thing out like right. this. Right? Hold this thing out like this. Yeah, because the cameras are worse on the Vision Pro too, right? Like, yeah, and I could definitely deal without the eyesight features, which creep my wife out to no end. I think there's like you a very like... clear, very clear roadmap towards the Vision, and not the not. The... Yes, but I do, I do want to the... reiterate. It was impressive. It took a lot for Sam to break. Yeah. It, it, it was it basically it took something that you would never do unless you like drop it off of a bridge. Just dropping it yeah. normally, it's that thing is so durable. I was shocked. I um, I was actually surprised too, how, how how durable that was. I was just gonna say, with the eyesight, you look like uh, what's that thing from Ice Age with like the droopy eyes, yeah. like slanted, the sloth, and like really spread sloth, yeah. really really far spread apart. That's what I looked like. Also, uh, I don't know if you saw in my video, it was like midway through, kind of long video. A lot of people making long long content on this too, which I kind of liked. Lot. Um, a lot, yeah. So. I called my wife and I didn't tell her like that this was going to happen. I just FaceTimed her and her reaction was like, she'd like literally jumped back and then showed my, my daughter. And she was like, Oh God, <laughs> like you could just tell, like what happened to daddy? do not look good. Yeah. Persona does not look. I good. haven't persona seen John's persona. Okay. John, we haven't seen your persona. Yeah. John, you got to show us. Okay. We can, we, we, we can hop on a FaceTime in like 10 minutes. I'm happy to show. I got to okay. redo it again. So um, for me, so your too. wife was scared. 
my girlfriend mm-hmm. just laughed at. It was like, oh, that, I guess that's I'm... an appropriate reaction. To laugh. <laughs> it was just laughter for like two. Yours minutes looks. Straight. Yours looks good though. Yeah. Yours looks good. You look fine. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate that. That that confidence boost because someone yeah. just laughing at you for two minutes. <laughs> it's like okay, I get it. I get it. Not get great. It. Yeah. All right. Listen, Dan. Thanks for joining us this week. Apple Vision Pro. Of course, Huge man. week. Um. I am so looking forward to just seeing, obviously, as John said, not just the hardware, but the so- I really want to see how the software progresses, Same. right? The 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 bug Vision fix OS. updates. Exactly. What's WWDC going to bring in a few months? Vision yep. OS 2? Let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. It's uh, I'm in for the ride. Do, do we have to wait for new hardware to get Vision OS 2? No. Nope. Apple just push it out once, right? No. That'll no, be, I, don't think I think so. that's going to be coming in September alongside all the other stuff. Day one beta. That'll yep. be fun. Yeah, no, it gives us one more thing to look forward to to work on. Absolutely. Every time Dan's been on the show, we've talked football. He's mm. a Browns fan, mm. I'm yes. a Rams fan. Our seasons are over, but I did. I have an homage for you before we begin because we have a mm. joint history. Who you? This is the for the video podcast only. This is the Cleveland yeah. Football Club. <laughs> yes, the Rams originated in Cleveland. Ordered this they did. special. Ordered this special. Wow, uh, for my friend Dan. Put our rivalry aside. We can all appreciate the Rams as the original. Cleveland. Dude, I kind of want that. Can you send me a link? It's a cool shirt, right? It is this, awesome. This is, this is why you and should I be can... watching the video podcast, not just the audio. You can not only see Absolutely. my dirty guest room, but also my pretty ball of shirt. I think Cleveland is one of the few, if not only, franchise that's had their football team leave them twice. <laughs> uh, L.A. Oh, we L.A., lost, right, 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 right. The Raiders oh, and well, the Rams, same year. You lost it twi- so we're tied. So we really yeah. are the same. <laughs> Um, and the sure. weather's the same. Everything about exactly, LA exactly the same. Exactly same, same. 